Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be filling out our 2019 March Madness Tournament Bracket. This is going to be the East Region. I'm going to break my videos up into regions. East Region, Midwest Region, uh, South Region, West Region. That wasn't in a specific order. So we're going to be breaking down each region and my picks for those. And then the Final Four would have its separate video. So each region and the Final Four will have its separate videos on picks. That's what I... That's what I'm going to do for this, not to break, not to just make a whole 40 minute entire tournament predictions video, just to break it up into regions for you guys if you just want to see some specific picks here and there. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to start with the East region, and before we get into our picks, let's take a look at the first four games, because I usually, I like to pick the first four games. That's just me. Um, so I went ahead and picked them, especially because three of the last four years, a first four team has ended up making... Of winning their first round of 64 game so I think it's interesting that the first four is overlooked as much as it is I really don't like to do that so we're gonna be looking at the first four matches I have NC Central beating North Dakota State to face Duke which I really don't think that's much of a difference but my big pick right here is Belmont defeating Temple in the first round to move on to the, the Temple in the first four to move on to the first round that's an interesting pick because they barely got into the tournament. I think that that was the right decision, but barely getting in, I think that it was the right decision, and we'll see. We'll see if I have that upset pick, or we're going to kick things off right now in the tournament. First round, first game, Duke, NC Central. I really don't have much changing. I think that the 16 seed UMBC upset was a one-time thing. I don't see it happening again. I got Duke moving on. VCU, UCF, it's eight nines are a toss-up game. I think that this is the clear-cut one of the clearest, I think, if not the second clearest, eight, nine games of the entire tournament. VCU, they're coming from an Atlantic 10 conference where they weren't as much consistent the entire year, but just enough to get the one overall seed and get themselves into the tournament. UCF, they proved themselves towards the end of the season. They're riding more of a hot streak than VCU. They're a better team right now. I think they're a better team overall. I got the Golden Knights moving on to the second round to face Duke. Mississippi State Liberty. Now, I've got an upset pick here. I'm going with the Liberty Flames to move on over the Mississippi State Bulldogs. The Bulldogs, I believe, should have been definitely a lower sixth seed than what they are. I think that Liberty, they're going to be a tough out. They're one of the more underrated 12 seeds. This game needs to be put under a microscope, no matter what anybody says. This is going to be a tough game for Mississippi State, and I do not think that they're going to get the job done. An overrated team in the tournament gets upset in the classic 5-12. That's a game. Virginia Tech, St. Louis. St. Louis, they were a bid, bid thief. Virginia Tech, I got them moving on. They had a nice win over Duke, but that was without Zion Williamson at Virginia Tech. So I think that that matchup, I don't know if you kind of want to go back to that to say Virginia Tech is going to be a team that can make it far into the tournament, but I definitely think Virginia Tech does have the talent to make it a decent way into the tournament, even though they look like it's on a collision course with Duke. Maryland, Belmont, here's where I said that Belmont first four game was going to come into effect. I have the upset pick here. I'm going with the 11 seeded Belmont. The Bruins to beat Maryland because Maryland, even though they're led by Bruno Fernando, they are a nice, they have a nice size to them. I think that Dylan Windler in Belmont is one of the more underrated teams easily for me in this tournament because the Bruins, they barely got into the tournament. I think it was the right decision just missing out on that automatic bid, losing to Murray State in the Ohio Valley Conference championship game. Looking to get, They were looking to get the first bid, not able to get it, but they do get in an automatic bid. Interesting thing, though, they are one seat ahead of Murray State, who got a 12 seat in the tournament. That's something interesting to note, but I do think Belmont comes up with the upset over Maryland to move on to the second round round of 32 LSU Yale a lot of people are gonna probably ridicule me for this pick I'm going with Yale the 14 seed upset over the three seed LSU they're missing head coach Will Wade he and he that's been a huge factor they lost by three to an eight seed in Florida in the SEC tournament and Florida wasn't the eight seed in the country they were the eight seed in the SEC tournament they only got in with a 10 seed into the tournament. I think that that was a bad loss for LSU. That shows that they really have been hurting with Will Wade off the floor. He's not going to return for tournament time, and that's almost inevitable. And, yeah, they're coming out of the Ivy League. And rem Let me remind you what the Ivy League has done in recent years. 
2013, 14-seeded Harvard wins their first round matchup. 2014, 13-seeded Harvard wins their first round matchup. 2016, 12-seeded Yale wins their first ever tournament game. I think Yale wins their second ever tournament game, moving on as a 14-seed over a 3-seed upset. Louisville, Minnesota, Minnesota showed that they were a tough team to beat. Louisville, they haven't been very hot towards the end of the season. They have definitely showed a lot of weaknesses. I think Minnesota is going to expose those in a mini 10 over 7 upset in the East region. Michigan State, Bradley, two, over, two versus 15. I think that speaks for itself. I really do not think that Bradley can pull off that upset, just sneaking in a bid stealer in the Missouri Valley Conference. Duke, UCF. Again, I'm going to have Duke moving on. I think that Zion, RJ, Trey Jones, Cam Reddish, Marquise Bolden, even though he's not going to be back. But they just have such... They have a lot of talent. They don't have a deep roster, but they definitely have a lot of talent on their roster. Liberty, Virginia Tech, again, I have ACC. ACC team moving on. Virginia Tech's going to end up defeating Liberty. I think Liberty's mini Cinderella run is going to come to a screeching halt. The Hokies have had one of the more underrated seasons, in my opinion, in all of college basketball this year. They end up as a four seed. They had the possibility to end up on the 3 line, but they did have some criti critical losses. They ended up where they should be, and I think they move on to the Sweet 16 on a collision course. ACC, ACC matchup in the Sweet 16 with Duke. Belmont, Yale. I got Belmont in the Sweet 16. Again, the Ivy League teams, they win their first-round games, but they're not very well known for their second-round games. Belmont, they're going to be too tough, in my opinion, for Yale. Dylan Windler, again, leading the Bruins to a surprise Sweet 16 appearance when many people didn't even think that they would end up at the tournament in the first place. Michigan State, Minnesota. I got Michigan State moving on. Big 10 matchup right here. Minnesota, they can win some Big Ten matchups, but they can lose some Big Ten matchups. I think that this one is near impossible for Minnesota to possibly come out with a victory. So Michigan State moves on to the Sweet 16. Duke, Virginia Tech, now that Zion is back for the Duke Blue Devils, I think that Duke is going to be overpowering Virginia Tech. Down low especially, which is exactly where Virginia Tech won the game when they played without Zion. Now that Zion's there, Zion can help that front court for the Duke Blue Devils and that the Duke... The Dukies, the Duke Blue Devils move on to the Elite Eight. Michigan State, Belmont, I think this is where Belmont Cinderella run comes to an end. Cassius Winston, Big Ten Player of the Year. I think that he is going to lead the Spartans. And Sparty goes to the Elite Eight. I think that Michigan State's just going to be too much for Belmont. Yes, Belmont came up with a win over a Big Ten team in Maryland. Who Maryland, they're significantly under Michigan State. Yale, a team that just comes up with a surprise because LSU, they ha Yale got the right draw. They just, just had the right circumstances to get into this game. That's why Belmont Cinderella run. Mini Cinderella run to the Sweet 16 ends right there. Duke, Michigan State, this has got to be the most intriguing possible Elite Eight matchup. Duke, Zion Williamson, R.J. Barrett, Cam Reddish, Trey Jones, Michigan State, they got Cassius Winston, but I think that Michigan State, even though they lost Aaron's, in the Big Ten Tournament. I think that Michigan State can go deeper into their bench than Duke can. I think that's going to be the factor in this game. Minutes played. That Coach K is going to have his guys on the court a little too long. Michigan can go deeper into Michigan State can go deeper into their bench. Duke, in the tournament, recent history, they have not been good. Yes, they won the national title in 2015. I'm not going to take that away from Duke. But losing to Lehigh, a 15 seed, Mercer, a 14 seed. South Carolina, a 7 seed last year. They did make it to the Elite Eight last year. I think that both seasons, their road ends in the Elite Eight. And the shocker, Michigan State. I've got them moving on to the Final Four. In Minneapolis, I know that this is kind of orange, though this year it's not kind of like a San Antonio theme. Because it was the San Antonio, ignore that this is all pro probably from 2018. Because it is, it's a fat head I got last year for the tournament. It's dry erase, so I'm going to keep using it as long as I possibly can. So dry erase took everything off the board from last year. New on the board for this year, and this year 
Michigan State makes it to the Final Four out of the East region. That's going to wrap it for my East region predictions, guys. Thank you for watching this one. Make sure to check out my South region predictions and also my Midwest and West region predictions. But the South region predictions should be coming up next. That's the region in the top right corner. That's the video I will be doing next up, doing that region. So make sure to leave your comments in below about my picks. What do you think about them? What are your picks in the East region? And until next time, again, thank you for watching my East region predictions on my 2019 March Madness bracket.